elimination playoff game and heroic's gonna be starting on this t side here on vertigo they better have turned their fortunes around on this attacking side or else they're in trouble and right out of the gate it's oc with two headshots alicia's gonna go for one more oh dear that's not the way you want to start this out. OC continuing the confident aggression. Even spots down, just jumping away. But he's got nowhere to go. He's already blocked in. One to nothing. Now 11 straight defensive rounds for Team Liquid. Yep. That's pretty solid, got to say. And uh, Alige with an even bigger smile after that round. I think uh, things looking pretty quiet. For a team that's normally rather emphatic and uh, pretty jubilant about their cheering, not a lot going on in terms of camaraderie and the body language of Heroic right now. Be interesting to see, or rather know, what was said between the maps. One to nothing. Five tech nines for Heroic. It's down in middle, four players at the base of A-Ramp just locked out of these smokes at the moment. Shocks to anchor down the B bomb site. Naf is going to be in support. He'll be working with OC to move between the bomb sites and keep their eyes on middle. While the classic North American duo of Elysian Nitro holds down A-Ramp on this defensive side. Nitro. At Sandbags looking for information. He's got smoke in hand. If he can find the right timing. Bit of a one way. They're going to spam through that. They know what it means. First kill for Nitro. Can he get back? 5 HP. Elise is there to protect. Tessis jumps up to try and punish. And he is swept aside. OC adds one more on top of it. He gets aggressive towards Yellow. Another kill for Nitro. And he keeps swinging with 5 HP. Liquid give no access to the ramp over to Heroic. Absolutely nothing. That's solid. Absolutely shut down. Liquid looking very good. I mean, you're on for the right prediction so far, Jason. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, I suppose. We are early in this game. They have the momentum from the economy. This map's grown on me, I have to say. Yeah, you were uh, you were like uh, leading the Vertigo hate train there for a little bit. Yep, I was. You're back, though. Well, well, welcome to the party. Welcome to the Vertigo Appreciation Club. I don't... I, you know... I got the invitation. I haven't declined. I don't know if I've accepted it yet, okay? okay. That's, we'll put it there. Well, you know, it's like $50 a plate, so make sure you get that RSVP in as soon as you can. Yeah. We'd appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Wait, am I paying the 50 or are you? No, the, someone is. Okay. Well, it's not me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Shox gets into the corner. Smoke down to cover the access temporarily to the stairs. More importantly, though, to let him get this position, and he's going to make good on it. Spops out one. We had an MP9 ace for Naf in the first game. Maybe we'll get one for Shocks this time. Naf had $7,400 after that round, keep in mind. I actually really like how the whole team Liquid's opened this up. Uh, we saw, obviously, the pistol on OC and Elise peeking down and fighting. We saw in the second round, maintaining aggression and not giving access over to the A-Ramp. And now we see Shocks being a nuisance pushed up and the flanks coming in already, even though it's negated. I like the idea that Liquid is starting out, out this half saying, we're going to get right in your face. We're going to let you know that we're going to challenge for every little bit of map control, especially after 10 to nothing half. This can put a lot of stress on a team after you just get blanked in your T-side on Ancient, you come into this one and Liquid's in your face at all times. Never lets you feel comfortable. Stown. Move forward with the MP9. It's Nitro that wants to slide. No, it's Naf instead. They had the bomb covered off either way. Losing two members, not the end of the world, more so when Shox was one of them and he farmed up a good amount of cash on that MP9. Hey, things are so advanced these days, Jason. Back when I was a kid, we only had MP3s. All right, you've transitioned to dad joke mode, haven't you? That, that, was, that was quick. You ran out of material in map one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You really used all the gold quickly. I'd like to think that last one was gold myself. <laughs> Whatever. It's not bad. I didn't mind it. Deep nade, chunks down, shush and refresh, about 30... Damage a piece on each of them. Shocks playing the off angle. No flashbang. He looks away, but is able to go one for one. Naf is going to step up. Another flashbang. He wants to get aggressive, at least jumping on top of the board to make sure control is not there. Double stack, vertical stack in middle between OC and Elise. They're going to get no attention for the moment. Nitro's even backed off the A bomb site. They've got plenty of utility for a retake, so he's not too nervous, not sweating about it at the moment. Minute and 13 seconds on the clock. Oh, but they have a mystery. Naf's gonna have a big job to do. Oh, 
However, I know for a fact, Liquid has a lot of confidence in Naf's abilities in these situations. Liege will back off of it. Very slow pace from Heroic, 36 seconds. Any other map, I might not even make note of that as of yet, but on Vertigo, that's a lot of time bled off the clock. It's it's isolated. It's individual defense, though. Nobody can actually help each other. Naf and Elise cannot work together. Molotov is out. Naf is kind of stuck between two flames. OC, oh, he rotates over at the perfect time. He's got the moves. He's there. Elise has transitioned over. Great communication from Team Liquid. Again, this defense is absolutely perfect. Props. I did not think that they were going to be able to rotate OC over in time and allow Liege to step into the B bomb site with Naf, but that's impressive. Still no T sided rounds from Heroic. What is going on? Heroic, normally fairly proficient. I mentioned it in the past sometimes, though, and I've mentioned it in a positive light that Kadian, and we heard it while he was commentating with us, watching Astralis and Navi, two teams that he knows, he tends to play teams like players, teams like Navi very closely. I almost think he's very good at anti-stratting, and Liquid right now, you, you can't do that. Well, these two teams with these lineups have obviously have never played each other. This is that first thing, and, and, and um, yeah, he, that is one thing he mentioned during the cast as well, is just playing against teams that you've never, you haven't really seen before, or he's mentioned it in interviews. Elige, he's got a great angle, and he's gonna push around him. He's got another solid headshot. Two for one for Elige. Refresh has bypassed that position. Elige going down, but they've got the advantage. You're absolutely right. Limited as well on the ramp, but no flank coming in, so they could still fall off of this and buy some space. The AK-47 has been picked up. Kadian will be the one to use it. He's the high HP player of the three remaining. Not that there's much difference between them, but it is enough that he can withstand one shot from an M4 and the FAMAS of Nitro. So three of the four rifles, Naf being the only one that could take him down in a single bullet. Got utility for, for retake, Liquid, and an ability to delay this plant. Molotov gonna come in on the default spot, and ooh, Shush is gonna tap it, wait for some HE grenades, second Molotov thrown out. They're trying to buy time through these smokes. They know there's only one safe place he can plant. They've oh, dropped the bomb. Yeah, right at the end, they do drop him. Refresh gets one, but there's shocks and OC over the top. Only two players go down for Team Liquid. It's five to nothing, 15 straight defensive rounds for Team Liquid in this series. Ooh, this is starting to look atrocious. And credit to them for trying to get the bomb plant down, but a drywall boost instead, and that with the AK committed to the spray. Yeah, and I mean, we should, we should keep this, 15 straight is, is a cool stat, but I mean, the, the, the obviously the last five are the only ones that matter at the moment, because this is still a half that can be recovered for Heroic. It's not like they're down and out for it just yet. It's that scary thing is we just haven't seen a whole lot of, a whole lot of power, especially with entries. It feels like Team Liquid really, really has the advantage in terms of opening duels being won at the moment, and that's scary. Heroic has not been able to move around the map. Just as I say it, there's a change. OC, OC excuse me, swings out to grab one to trade it off and keep things even at four. Kadian just holding it out down below. Shush trying to put himself in his position to get a pick at this point. He's got... No, he does not... <laughs> what in the hell was that? <laughs> like, I saw him lining it up. I thought there's no way. That's so spicy. That is absolutely foolish. How did he get that read? Someone go back and watch the demo and figure out what was the tell that he knew he would be boosted on that box and everything. I don't think there's a tell. I think that's just a lineup he has to know exactly when he uncrouches where that where his crosshair is going to be. I suppose right. it's yeah. the only place that can be seen. Yeah, it's just a good crosshair lineup. I'm, that's that's a foolish shot. Well, Naf was in this position previously, and he got Molotov'd out. So with four mollies in the hands of, yeah, Heroic, I was going to say, there's that, that's, that spot is going to be no access for Naf. Here they go, moving up, and Shush gains a lot of ground before Naf is aware. First T-round on the board in the half for Heroic. First T-round on the board in the entire series for Heroic. Yep. It's crazy to think, but it is the case. Do you want to hunt down this AWP? That's the question, because normally in a round like this, you'd say, we don't have the money to go for the hunt, right? But, you know, take the AWP out of his hands. You've got a four-on-one. It might be worth it. Yeah, it might be. I, I think if you have four players after it, if you lose one, okay, you can justify it. Don't lose more than that. You need to build your own economy up, but certainly it would be beneficial to get rid of the AWP. I'd, su I'd be surprised if Tessas also didn't call out that he's a little bit low just because he did get into a, like a prolonged engagement. He knows he tagged OC at least a little bit, two, three AK bullets. So he'll be calling out that OC is going to be a little bit weakened from the earlier engagement. 
He's far enough away that he won't be heard from the bottom of the ramp, uh, scoping and unscoping in at this point in time. But here they come. They're going to swing around in every direction, including walking up close to him. On short, he hits the first shot. He's done. Ooh, they missed. Oh, Kadian's missed. That gives him another shot, and he survives with the AWP. That's a blunder. Oh, no. That was not worth at the end of the day. You lose your own AWP? I mean, they get their first round, so something to cheer about, but you still did not need to do that. Oof. This is sick. Oh. Yeah, that's nasty. I don't. I think if you're if you're someone who likes to match make on Vertigo, maybe don't play on that double stack box for a little bit because there's going to be a lot of people trying out that lineup. A lot of people going for it. So no off on Kadian. Again, they're going to go back to where they got the same entry previously. Uh, it feels like a rinse and repeat round. It's Tessus again to lead the way. This time, Nitro doesn't get picked off early, and that's good because he's the only defender here. They do walk up before he's prepared, but he still manages to grab one. Now it's all about delaying. Now it's all about staying alive. Molotov is out to keep them at bay, keep them from pushing in his position. I believe he even has a smoke to put out any Molotov that would come into his location. And they want to press. They want to wrap around him. Nitro still with vision. Not sure where to look, though. That's the bigger problem in all of this. OCAWP. He can watch toward the corner of the crane. Molotov went in behind him, so that actually forces him out a little bit. And we've got a player in the form of Refresh standing by the bomb, staring it down from outside of the railing. Tough one to spot. Shush can't land the spray. He'll be forced out off of the position. Elise on the flank. This is going to be a go. Shush is going to burn. And they found it over the top. That is so sick. What a retake. Yeah, well, I mean... Holy! Yeah, when that when that bomb goes down, Heroics used all their nades. I think they had three, maybe four flashbangs when that all began. And Molotov and three flashbangs in their pocket. And they also spent like two Molotovs and two smokes on the retake. So they had so many nades. It's, the, it's kind of like the double-edged sword of this kind of a strategy called by Heroic. Walking up the ramp, contacting into the bomb site. You haven't forced out a whole lot of utility across the map, so there's still so many tools remaining for Team Liquid's defense to make that happen in the post plant. Timeout taken from Heroic. OC is 10 and 0 at the moment. I think we'll be getting another buy from Heroic as well. Shush, Kadian have money for AK and utility. Refresh can get an AK 47. Stown and Tess is just below 4K. Might have to drop down to Galil's in, in order to get grenades. But they've got money for a buy, and it feels like at this point, whenever you can challenge and whenever you can actually fight with weaponry at 6-1, to one, just go for it. So two Galil's up on Kadian and two AK-47s. See? Fitting name for a player on American team, Jason. Oh, say can you see? <laughs> okay. <laughs> really forcing it. Good shot for Mosi. Elise at the off angle and shocks towards the B bomb site. God bless. Three quick kills to open up for Team Liquid. They've got a five on two. Tessis is forced to try and make a play. And he's had space over here a number of times. His one kill is the entry on Nitro two rounds previously in the one round that Heroic has on the board. Second one on Nitro. That's going to give them a ton of ground to work with, but they still have to compensate for the loss. And they have no nades. And OC already found the Dawn's early rise with the opening pick, but it's Tessis that goes through, and he's gone. Tessis isn't done there. He's going to go straight through to CT. This is going to get awkward. He's going to try and do what he can, but there's one on the flank, which means he won't be able to control that. He won't expect the second in that position. Oh, my. What a round from Tessis. That's four. Shox finds one. No way. If he could, boy, he couldn't. Couldn't do it. Couldn't get the nade. Knows that he's gone back. The short flashes over. Wants to try and challenge and push him down. That's a desperate thing to do, but he knows he has to be desperate in this situation. And Tessis is lined up for an ace that he's going to get right now. What a time. They absolutely needed it. Yeah, let a, let a smile creep into your face because that is a huge round to win for your team. Not just the victory in the round itself, but breathe a little life into the boys. And to this team that we know likes to get so hyped up and excited, give them a reason to cheer. Give them a reason to get loud. This is beautiful every step of the way from Tess's. That's a crisp shot onto OC. This is a good find. Elise not prepared for the push with that AWP in hand. And even the follow-up on Naf as he goes for the trade. Absolutely filthy round at a perfect time for Tess's. 
Six to two, and that digs pretty deep into the money that Liquid had building up. They let a five on two slip away. Maybe not even slip away. It was kind of taken out of them by phenomenal shooting from Tess's. Nice shooting, Tess. Should also benefit of the fact that, as you mentioned, Liquid was given a lot of space over at that bomb site quite frequently. Yeah, he was able to just roam in. So Refresh wants to flash Shush out from the cubby. He's already got up on top of the site, so that's one job done. Shox is exposed to this flash as well. Shox is trying to find a position to play. The second flash caught him. They don't see him, but he can't do anything because he can't see anything at all, let alone the enemy. As Tessis finds another shot, Nitro goes down. He did get one before that. So leave Elysia and OC as the last two remaining, but they may just try and find a bank and cash out on this round. Elysia looking to at least investigate as to what is going on, maybe get a few exits. Does OC wrap around underneath? No, not quite. So. Yeah, these, these weapons are important. If they can keep these alive, OC can drop and there'll be another buy in the next round for Team Liquid, but they need both these guns to survive. That's why you're seeing them be so passive. Although, as I say, that Elysia over the top looking for a quick exit, and he's going to get refresh. So Heroic lose one at the end, but they've got a third round on the board. They've cut the lead of Team Liquid down to three. They've won three of the last four rounds. Starting to come back into this. Stown still stuck on zero kills, and the desk touched on it, and we all know, we've all been watching it over the past few months. He's been incredible, absolutely incredible for Heroic. I'll lead him to come alive to win this series. All right, what's the change of play here, boys? I think I think Liquid. I don't know if the call is if the change is going to be to get aggressive, but you would like to stop seeing them let have let let heroic have so much space at those at those bomb sites. Obviously, and, you know I think this this round they kind of called more of a presence over towards the A bomb site because heroic was emphasizing that with some contact plays up the ramp and obviously turning into the bomb site. This time it was just B that was playing a little bit passive. but that's twice now that Heroic has taken up a lot of space. You get a player into that cubby and it's so strong. The hit comes in so quick. You can see Shocks. He's, when he sees the smokes flying over the top, he's shuffling through his smoke, his flash, his Molotov, his counter nades to slow things down, but you get caught because you never realize that a player was so close, so it really messes with the internal timing. Oh, mid push. It is aggression. It's not just denying space. It's going and taking some of your own. That one's double flash. Trying to get away, trying to buy as much space as possible, thinking they may not clear that far. But nothing more he could do, perhaps, other than to jump off the stairs altogether and scurry underneath. They manage the opener, so the aggression pays off. It's still very passive, but look at Elysia's position. Oh, my. Yeah, but Osi's exposed. Osi's exposed if Elysia doesn't see this. Oh, he's got it right at the end. If Tess had kept creeping up, creeping up, maybe not along that fence line, he might have been able to get a freebie on Osi at the corner. That was a bit sketchy. Well, it works out. You're not going to get away with that every single round, but they needed something, and that's what they've come up with to get what would be a seventh round if they're able to convert this. So it's not like they're desperate for rounds. They just needed to change the pace. It's a cool play from Elish, though. Probably reading that Tess has had so much success and actually been able to find that ground that he just makes a clever way of saying, yeah, take it. I want you to have it. I've set up a trap. And it yields results. So does OC with the op onto Cadian. Liquid in full control, although they did drop a two versus five earlier. I don't think this one's in any danger. Oh, look at oh. that timing. Yeah. Oopsie. Oh, shocks. Oh, no. Arthritis for the old man. Not again. There we are. Half's going to take down Shush. They'll at least recover that. That would have been abysmal. No, I look, that's just, that happens every now and then. <laughs> you get caught off in a position you just checked. You're not ready to aim back to and poor shocks. But uh, yeah, refresh is going to get taken out. Naf with the kill and then they'll go up now to 7-3. I liked some of the, you know, we get a few rounds here and there that we listen in on at different reasons at different points in the half, by the way. That's the same position that that retake went down when Refresh was holding the bomb. Elise went over the top to find him there at the fence before, so he's not the first time he's used it. It's the first time he's used it on a defensive position. Uh, Shocks 
we've heard different uh, sort of the listen-ins and communications. Sometimes we, we get it for cheering, sometimes because of something unusual. The last one we got was Shocks pushing through to CT fast play, KDM with the Tech 9. And you can tell how aware he was. I'm CT, he has to be B. I'm going to rotate back. That's the kind of leadership they need out of a guy like Shocks. If he's going to come in and do his thing, he's got to be able to take space away and, and really try and work with the team and give them something to kind of go off of. And again, he does that last round. He may have died, but he still had the flank. He still had them all locked out. It was pretty good map control. Palmer, he made that footstep or else Refresh would have never turned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One for one for Shox in this round as he's playing a close off angle towards the B stairs. That gives an AK-47 over to Shush and Heroic is going to walk all the way back to the A bomb site. No Molotov to clear out Elijah's positions behind or position behind Sandbags. And if Nitro solidifies a position inside the bomb site, that's a lot of distraction to take eyeballs away from Elijah popping out for a multi-frag. If you're heroic, you kind of just got to pray that nobody's here. You'd be wrong, one for one. That's not bad, all things considered. No, not bad at all. And Elise went for the over-the-top shot, which does mean he has to swing. They were certainly ready for that, Cadian. Oh, yikes. Okay. Try again. Maybe just move that cross there a little bit. Yeah, back up. Probably better. And three, two, one, run boost. I want that replay over and over and over again in my life. As if that couldn't have gone any worse. They mess up the first flash. The run boost already would have happened. And literally, as Cadian jumps to get boosted, the nade blows up. The yeah, that, that that's outrageous. Might be the most perfectly timed nade <laughs> I have ever seen. God. Unbelievable. Oh, thank you for the replay. <laughs> this is the best. Look, ready? Oh, just kidding. Peace. And he falls. <laughs> you know, just when you've seen about every way that a run boost could get messed up. That's the new one for me. <laughs> yep, that's incredible. Perfect. Eight to three. Five round lead for Team Liquid. Defense still looking very strong. Well, yeah, Liquid getting an eighth round in an incredible way. Oh, another nade kill. Nitro cleans up some of the spam damage from Elysian, and even adds one more on top of it. Again, look, this map gets so like, exponentially more difficult if you can just rarely find success at this eight bomb site. And outside of Tess's providing some opening kills, none of these plays towards A ramp with massive bodies for Heroic have worked out. Elysian and Nitro have done such a good job controlling this part of the map. Elise just being an absolute nightmare. He spotted both of the remaining players. Another two versus five for Team Liquid. And this one they've got no problems with. No problems at all. Nine to three. I just had to peek at the utility damage. And uh, Nitro and Shocks are both nearing 200 right now for utility damage. Oh, yeah. That's not... Actually, I think uh, Nitro just crossed it. Yeah, Nitro 215. Shocks 174 in terms of nade damage. OC's up there as well at 128. Frustration today for Heroic. Offense is not looking good. This is 19 to 3 run just in terms of CT sides for Team Liquid. Well, not necessarily a run, just 19 and 3 in general across the both maps. 10 nothing on Ancient, 9 3 here. Stown still quiet, 1 and 10. Yeah, not. Uh, what was the quiz before this game? Who was the highest rated player? At Katowice? At Katowice before the playoffs. Stown was the answer, or Stavin, uh, if you're Paula. Um, but Stalin was the answer, and that's that's ridiculous because where is he now? I mean, that's that's a huge fall off for Heroic. Such a strong player for them. They're gonna drop away from middle after already deploying a few grenades in that direction and head over toward the A ramp, where in which another flash has been deployed by Elise. And Elise will get himself up on the fence. Skylight Molly will go towards. 
scaffolding. They're not on the wide side of that smoke. Hang on, they're inside of it. Nitro's got the two kills. Bombs dropped temporarily. They've lost track of Kadian, though. And he's going to get behind the liege and behind Nitro. Not bad from Kadian, but turning around, he realizes OC's up above. And he can see everything from up there using the USP to tap away. It is just Stalin remaining. So you're going to check out on top. OC still trained on ramp without AWP. And takes his head clean off. No problem. 17 and 2 for OC. Obviously, a lot of conversation and attention on him. A lot of people in North America have been waiting for him to have his chance in the top tiers of Counter Strike. And he's arrived, logging a great performance here on the second map in the series. Seven round lead. Oh. Kadian not able to hit the shots toward the crane. A liege firing through the smoke. No one catching those bullets on the other side. Shush will sit back, and Shox is already down again to the bottom of the B stairs. Smoke at that position. We saw that way back at the start of this game, one in which he put a smoke there with the MP9. Two rounds left, as rough as this half has been, Heroic, if they can scrape these final two, how many times have we seen a team just getting battered and managing to find the last couple rounds to keep it within reach and then see them have a good second half? OC's got a deep angle in towards middle. Naf was there with him, so was Elige. They just cleared everything out. They're gonna back away. They feel no pressure, no attention. Nitro playing very passively towards A at an off angle. I'm curious to see if Liquid's going to try and actually rotate back into this bomb site before the hit comes. They're considering it for the moment, but haven't moved out just yet. And I, they don't really have a lot of nades for a retake this time around. We've seen some cleat ones when they had a plethora of Molotovs and smokes and flashes. This time, it's going to be what looks like just one flashbang on the retake. 14 seconds, they dump it all to try and delay and try and slow things down. No damage has been dealt to actually deal with the planter, and the nade goes in the wrong place anyways. Here comes that retake, nice and quick. Two kills for Shush. Two kills for Shush, one for Nitro, and that's him that goes down. And he's going to try and get a ball. Stowin this time finding shots. As he'll get his second kill of the game and an all-important one that's going to send Liquid running. Like a waterfall because that's kind of like liquid running. They're going to run back toward B and save the bomb. Save, save the bomb? Save the op. Just save the bomb. They're going to save the op. <laughs> Woo, that's so close. I, man, like a hole in his shirt. About as close as you can get. Nice job from Heroic. Nice and easy. Delay tactics from Liquid in the round don't work. It's a relatively pacifist round. There's a Dren behind. Bit of chatter in the freeze time. And we'll get straight back into it. Four rounds only so far this series for Heroic. I mean, the scoreboard almost says it all. Shocks and Naf have been at the B bomb site in the middle. They've got 14 combined kills. Elise has 15. OC has 17. Nitro's at 13. Those have been the guys dealing with so much pressure at A ramp and have had so much success dealing with that pressure at A ramp. Final round of the half. Liquid's going to bust out a double op setup. You just saw Naf holding his aggressively at the B stairs. <sighs> nice nade. He's a serviceable opper. Oh, absolutely. Spent a lot of time uh, opping when they were in a little bit of limbo. Shocks around. Ooh, just spots Shush coming through. Shush did turn to check the position, but that's a tough fight to win. I think Nitro's going to flash a leash through this. Shock's still staying down there. So mid under attack. 
And Shocks to watch. Smoke to dissipate. They're going to put another smoke down as it blooms. Has a gap in it, but it lets Shocks hide again. That was all by design. Let that one fade completely. Let me get a shot and then cover me off. And OC has Stowen down. It's Katie and Tessis remaining, and that is all. Look at Shocks. Yeah, he's been in three different positions. Now, Kadian's trained on this, but obviously scoping in would give away the sound cue. There's the flashbang as the smoke fades. Shocks should not get another one. Naf is going to back away. Kadian's brought down very low. I, I mean, this has just been heroic, not even able to do anything because Shocks has been in their face the whole time. They've lost all their players just trying to get basic map control underneath the stairs. That's, yeah. Pretty true. It is pretty standard position in a lot of ways. Naf, there you go. Serviceable indeed. Finds a double and makes it 11 to 4. What a half from Team Liquid. We'll see if somehow the CT side can amount to that for Heroic when we return. I sunk bomb. I killed the lane guy. Same big, same big. Same big. Maybe yeah, cross left. I sunk bomb. No, lane, lane, lane. Yeah, yeah, side, side, side. No, no, go, go. Diffuse, diffuse, diffuse. Diffuse. Nice. Good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, don't worry, bro. We rich. Perfect, guys. Yeah, I'm nice. running, I'm running, I'm running. Oh, you're fighting? Oh, 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 shoot. Shoot. Good. 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 Turn, 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 turn. Oh, shoot. Richard and I are walk flanking. Richard and I are walk flanking. I'm not saying left. We're flanking this guy. Back on the right. D4, jump through it. Back to you, back to you guys. No! Shit, Josh. Nice. You see? Headshot, headshot pistol. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, bro. I don't know why we were complicating it before. <laughs> <laughs> all laughter, all smiles. I, I told you. USB headshot pistol. It's so satisfying. Yeah, what a strategy as well. Just shoot headshots. You love to see it. Liquid loved it. They've been dominant in this series so far. Oh. They do get chunked down pretty bad. Yeah, there's some utility damage that goes the way of the CT. Certainly, they have the favoritism and <laughs> side pistol headshots. You see? Yeah. Don't complicate it before. Yeah, running the headshot strategy on both halves. Good shot from Alige. Immediate kill. Oh, the timing. The timing as refresh backs away. Oh, Alige is a little bit lucky, but actually, so is. Kadian to a certain extent. B bomb site pretty much lost. That kept so much attention on the other side of the map. Shush has no backup. Down to one HP. He's dropped. Liquid off that one kill from Elysian. A little bit of extra pressure. Kept this defense on the other side of the map as long as possible. And a tough retake now at hand for Heroic. No kit. Naf holding, trying to swing both sides. Shock's taken out. Refresh the one to get the kill, but Naf knows the information. Plays both sides of the AC unit. Hang on. This could be problematic. There isn't any utility to cover off that bomb. No smokes. Oh, and they don't even check it. They don't look for a leash. That one gets the shot back, though. And there is ample opportunity to cut the wires. It will be Heroic taking pistol number two. Wow, what a retake from Heroic. They did not have a whole lot of positivity coming into that. They, too, landing some stellar headshots, and that felt like a round that Liquid had it in the bag. 11 to 5. Refresh coming in. Goosh adds one more on top of it. Stown, this is a good kill as his teammate falls. Katie and not checking to the left. And beautiful to grab a leash right before he can get back into cover. And there's a little bit of life in the team. There's. We'll see how long they can keep it up because it's a second round buy for Team Liquid. AK 47 on a leash. Three Galils. Tech 9 on Nitro. And they've got nades to play with. Shocks. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Going on to these weapons is going to try and find an opening at B. So they'll sit back and play picks a little bit more in this round than otherwise you might expect. And so far, ooh, I was going to say the damage adding up, but a single shot from Stalin changes that. However, Nitro finishes off what Shocks started. And does Nitro, he's got like a little for sure. Does he push forward to get the M4? Apparently not. He's going to try and wrap back around. Unfortunately, Refresh has cut them down on the other side of the map now. Yeah. Good aggressive stance down the ramp. Smoke on the ground. Nitro's looking for it at the moment. He already has one in hand. Tess is a bit isolated. I don't know if Nitro doesn't look like he's going to clear it. Doesn't look like he's considering it. And they're starting to make noise, which is going to give away the game just a little bit. Tess is calling this out all the way along. 
problem is he slow checks that the gun barrel is going to protrude. And it's a trade, but Naf gave himself up. You're absolutely right. They didn't consider it, even though they tried to bait it. They were running away. And I think that was the intention, because you could see Nitro jumping back. Naf held the angle to see if there would be a peak. They just didn't know it was going to be that close. I like this play from Nitro. Go towards mid. You got to assume, you know, Refresh had a double kill at the eight bomb site. You got to assume Shush is going to keep track as much as possible on the B bomb site. So you're just going to slip the net right through the middle. Nitro has the whole map at his disposal if he wants it. Doesn't go window though, does he? He is. Ooh, that's an issue. If he makes noise dropping down, he gets rid of the positional advantage he has because they're going to start looking back. But he is far more clever than I and will be as silent <sighs> as he dare. I think he made one step in that, but either way, I don't think they'll have heard that. It was the loud drop they would, needed to be worried about. Shush is certainly up to the occasion. Looking back, spotting him up, but a smoke goes down, and he's got the protection of the boxes. The nade will take care of him, though, but a bomb plant is still achieved. Yeah, that's not bad whatsoever. Good play from Nitro just to get that plant. Do a decent amount of damage as well to Heroic with three kills. Two M4s are brought forward into the next round, but Heroic's defense is going to be happy with that one. They're closing the gap 11 to 6. That lead is whittled to just five. Nice job from Refresh transferring over for the second kill. Nitro transfers over there. And Liquid have a decision to make. They could they could force up if they want to lean on the economy of Heroic, but that would be risky. That's a long drop. We had a discussion during the group stage. You don't need to get back into it now. Physics were brought into play. Gravity, all of it. The whole bag. Three Tech Nines, Deagle, and a P250 for Team Liquid's attack. Towards the B-bomb site we go. Elyse to lead the way, spamming through that smoke. Plume just into... Oh, look at the damage. Look at the damage. Oh, Elyse, you could get one more. Kadian responds with an aid, but OC's coming through middle all along. Oh, the pace on this from Team Liquid. They have swarmed this B-bomb site. B-Tech just kicked in, yo. Other car reference? Honda, they're sponsored by Honda, Jason. Try and keep up. Perfect. Okay, Honda pre-Red Bull takeover. They actually can maybe finish the round, although yet to be determined. They're going to give this up and back off. The bomb not planted. So much damage taken through the smoke from Heroic. I don't think they ever kind of clicked into their brain that mid was a problem. They were struggling so much just to deal with the B pressure. But Liquid sneak away. Didn't feel safe at B. When do they get the information? How long does Liquid walk? Contact. I think they're gonna walk as far as they can. They only spot, okay, one, now they'll see it all. Thessus is aware. And even at this timing, the situation as it were that they left the B site. Oh, Bomb was the one to go forward. That's not ideal because now Refresh has control of it. Only 15 HP and an MP9 for Naf. Wrong man to lose the objective and Refresh takes back the round. Yeah, you can't you can't be too, too nitpicky about that one. You either plant the bomb and play the post plant or you make the decision knowing that the defense is going to be split. You take that gamble that it's going to be one and one and you swing with three players to get that kill. Just not as clean as they would have liked. Still, four frags in a round that you bring a half by into. You're going to be happy with money brutally low for Heroic and we saw this on Ancient as well it caused that defense of Heroic on Ancient on the CT side to have a really difficult time getting going and establish themselves because they simply just never had money and if Liquid can win here oh what a brutal reset it would be this close to the win yeah I think that one might have been an overcall I, I think that they actually had a better chance to just get that bomb down before rotating back to A yeah that's certainly I, I mean you could certainly make that argument have that conversation but I think in the heat of the moment uh, at the situation at hand you got to trust the players to make whichever call they feel is comfortable at the time Tess is not coming through the smoke oh now nah, starting it off OC through the wall that's such a small amount of, that one's a little better it was obviously a wall and a leg in the first shot they're not that's again that's unconfirmed damage as you like to say jason though so they're not going to be aware that they've hit him a leash burns on a 28 as well so damage that oc does through the wall is evened up by the molotov from heroic off angle vertical stack katie and looking to get one cheeky kill before activating refresh
Flash over the box, but the off angle, that's not going to catch them at all. Not going to hinder the position. Refresh here's becoming. Goes first. Katie unable to follow it up and down goes the liege. Not the other way around, not the bait in for the rifle, just a very quick fall and a nice response as they jump back toward the site. Shoulder shows OC, he's able to clip the edge and he'll take refresh down on the second shot that's as clean as a whistle. But it's a two versus three with 11 seconds left. OC, oh my God, if he hit that. Gotta protect Nav. Oh, Palm's gotta go down right now. He knows the lane's most likely. They're gonna swing it around. He's gotten off the plan. Nav's gonna try and just stay alive, try and get kills, can't do it. And so far, it's been a perfect defensive half from Heroic. Yeah, they're right back in this. And unfortunately for Nav, he goes down after the time of the round. He doesn't get any bonus money, just 650 in the bank for him, while the rest of his team have a little bit of money to work with. So we're gonna get another timeout from Team Liquid. This has been a very close affair, but that might be there on these first three rounds. Very, very close for Team Liquid. They couldn't convert any of them. That round's not bad from Heroic. Three players survive. So the economic advantage that Liquid had in, in a certain extent, in a certain perspective, kind of isn't really there anymore. The money's not great for Heroic's side. Liquid going to talk things over to make sure this T side doesn't get out of hand. Nitro, very, very vocal. They have a good interview where kind of said his time in Valorant came back. He'd learned a lot in terms of how to build a team and in leadership and managing personalities and play styles and trying to make it all work. Yeah, I, I can imagine that that Valorant would be a great place for that because you're dealing with sort of like 12 year olds the whole time and that can be <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yes, yes, I imagine it could be. <laughs> well played, Jason. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> 11 to 8, three round lead. Shock's going to swing back to a position that he previously occupied in the first half, and he's going to get a dish of his own medicine. Straight to the face as Stalin gets the kill. Heroic looking solid. I mean, this is... Liquid's got to know how to re recover in these situations as well. And this is where we just had one timeout. We're likely to see some more, but it gets desperate. They had a flawless half in a lot of ways, but they really do need to still get it done, get it across the line. 7 HP for OC, and he's going down. So now we are two rounds apart at 9 to 11. Just two rounds separating him. Bye coming in for Team Liquid. Naf, due to dying after the time a few rounds ago, is going to be stuck on a MAC-10. He's got nades at the very least. Liquid hasn't yet, I mean, much like Heroic, struggling to find some success that A ramp. Tessas gave Heroic some beautiful rounds in the first half to net them some of those early round victories. Double Molotov to prevent any kind of a peek from Sandbags. Elyse is going to start crawling up. Flashbang. Plenty of smokes in the way. Molotov extinguished, thrown into the smoke, and Heroic doesn't realize how close they are. Tess is. Gap in the smoke has Elyse. Will they let him get away? Can he get away? He gets one more. Good find. And Nitro is going to start taking space. Start clearing things towards the bomb site itself. Refreshing lane. Half's down below, though. She isn't going to be ready for this. It might just be a MAC-10, but the angle is firmly in his favor, and that's an upgrade. He now gets an M4 to work with. Does he want the M4? He's still on the MAC-10. That's a risky call to call for the push. The flank, Nitro's got one. He spots the other. Move into the B-bomb site with speed, with haste. Shock's bringing in the bomb late. And you have to imagine Stown is going to go for this. Bomb is passed over towards NAF. He'll stay in the site with that MAC-10. Stown is rotating over. He's got Kit. He's got Molotov in a smoke, but he's pretty low on HP. NAF's just gone for the MAC-10. He's screwed the M4. They've got the information. Low HP, though. He's got the movement mechanics, so fair enough. They know they've already done damage. Together they will hold. Try and play this one. Two. Oh, they're going to boost. Interesting call because that means they can't trade immediately. They're going to try and pick this just on the bomb when the defuse goes in. Incendiary behind quad. Does Stown even consider going if he doesn't get a pick? Smoke. They spot him. Now he knows it's a boost. They've got to get off it. If they're going to get trades, if he's able to isolate them, this is a problem, but he's off the bomb. They've bought enough time. That should do it on its own. And now back away. Shox gets the kill. So time becomes the friend of what could have been a problem, and it's Liquid to get their first T-sided round. This was a little bit risky, though. It gives away the player, both players' position, and there's a world that Molotov, that smoke, actually are so impactful and, and do just enough to allow him to stick that defuse at a certain situation. I think it would have been really interesting if he'd just gone for it. 
You can see Naf running and gunning with the MAC-10 on his way in and a little bit of panic mode. Liquid extend the lead to three as they get their first run on the board in the second half. Naf waiting outside generator. They're going to be expecting a little bit of aggression, perhaps, as Nitro, Cadian. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I wouldn't want to be Nitro right now, or maybe I would, because Cadian missed, but I wouldn't have wanted to be in the shot. Nitro, he's going to turn it around and come right back around the corner to get Stowen down instead. And I like this call from Team Liquid as well. Two players in middle, you know more than any, if anything at all. It's a calculated risk. Probably just one player in the beat bombsite, and actually it was open. No way for them to have known that. Cadian was rotating in from middle, so there's some space at this site. And actually, Cadian shifting all the way back to CT spawn, despite the fact that Tess's refresh and shush three players at ramp have seen absolutely nothing. Kadian can get caught in transition, but he's ready. He's prepared as, sure, as Shox leads the lurk. Flank is coming in. Naf. Good find from Kadian. The no scope directly beneath. And now this double flank from Tess's and Refresh gets so powerful. Kadian and Shush just have to pause. Let their teammate tech take next contact. Good shot from OC. Bomb still not down yet. Not yet. Refresh. Makes contact, but can't find the kill. OC just tapping to hold him off and aware they could be underneath of the catwalk. Man, look at the low HP, though. They need those headshots. No wonder he's trying to find one. Sneaky play from Nitro, and it's going to yield one, expecting Ooh. two. He reads it perfectly, and now he's got to get back on the horse and back to his former and longtime teammate, Elige. But Elige can take care of himself. Down goes Refresh, 13 for Liquid. What a great, great play from Nitro. Low HP, you know they're being passive. You know you spotted a couple on the flank. You've got nothing to do but push forward. Phenomenal round from Nitro to alleviate that retake, the pressure on that retake. A lot of questions how long it would take Nitro to get back, in, uh, back to his playing form from his time over at Valorant. He's at 21 kills, 10 deaths. He's had a few rough games here and there since his return, but we all know that's just gonna get better as time goes on, and it's nice to see him delivering here at a critical moment in a playoff game for Team Liquid. He's done it all. He's done every role. I mean, yeah, sometimes you- Early in his think. career, an entry fragger. Sick entry fragger too. Yeah. I buy power. He was the pickup that they made right before the bands came in. He wasn't part of that match, obviously, just to clarify for those of you who maybe know the story, but weren't around. He was, he joined afterwards and he was their best player in a lot of ways. He's in game led, obviously, during the Grand Slam run. He was opping during the Grand Slam run. Heroic brought down to just unarmored USPs. Liquid, a great opportunity to inch ever closer. It's a series point. Flashbang is going to come in, but Naf had an off angle. MAC-10 just chews him up. Pistols out as well. Naf might be on for another ace, but Shush has bailed out, unfortunately. Not even going to give him the chance. Another ace with an SMG for Naf. Three kills with that MAC-10. Three kills worth of... Heavy bonus money. Alige is just going to take him down out in the open. 14 to 9. Liquid just two rounds away from taking this series two to nothing. It's been one of kind of the big criticisms, you know, when you've heard kind of Alige say, you know, we're going to win this 2-1. You saw Alige in an interview say, we're close to being able to compete for championships. They don't really have a whole lot of big scalps on their resume in terms of big time matches that they've won. This would be the best one yet for this new roster of Team Liquid. The weird thing is, you know, post-pandemic, we're still coming back to normality. We aren't in the situation that we were prior, thank God, where there's a tournament every single friggin' weekend. Uh, and tournaments that would be scheduled around Pro League so that the team's not playing that week would be able to attend still. And in that case, two things would happen. One is you'd have enough matches that by now you'd say they haven't won a game. Okay, that's true. You'd have a larger sample size. But two is you never really get time to practice and work on things. And it was difficult to develop as a new team. So... I get your point. They haven't had that scope yet. You need to get one, but they also haven't played as many matches formerly in that time space that you w would have. So this, you're right. This is a big one for them. Got to get there first. Two more rounds to find. Naf and Nitro on MAC-10s. Naf again in towards middle. Utility passed over to Shush. Naf's going to have to lurk this just perfectly with this weapon. He's stepping up now to the plate. As Utility comes in, run and gun, he swings wide and fast. And at the default boxes, almost finds Shush. But he's got him pinned down, and he's got the information for his teammates. Nade comes in, 4 HP. Shush needs this to be perfect. He's going to try and use that smoke to his advantage. Watch the wide side. Not even look over top of it. Not give any positional advantage away. 
to Team Liquid. Meanwhile, oh my God, this is Pestis, great. Yeah, they've backed off. They think they've sold this. They do the execute to put Naf into play to pull attention away from middle to allow him to get that one kill. They're about to re-execute onto Shush with four HP, and they've already used all their counter utility to get into the bomb site. Shush not able to get one. Oh, refresh, no. just perfect. They ran by his position. They thought he might have moved. Molotov is going to delay the plant. Not much as it's put out by smoke. Yeah. Another retake coming in. Could extinguish because that was the right time to do it. Bomb goes down. Shocks on 15. You're right. 4 HP, but they went by it. Refresh able to make a huge play that's kept them in this round. But OC's got other ideas. And Shocks at quad is yet to be checked. OC's going to pull the attention. The aggro toward the stairs. They are spamming Shocks' position. OC goes for more. He's got Tessis down. We might have map and series point for Liquid as Shocks pops out late. Incredible stuff from OC. He had a great first half and this delivering in the post plan here. Two great shots in a two versus three, where his teammate is pretty much out of the fight. Shox is just baiting at that point. Shox is hoping the attention is going to be taken away, and OC provides just that. I, 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 there's been a lot of overhyped NA talent coming through the ranks. Stewie was arguably overhyped, but then lived up to it. Kusta, not so much. OC's the real deal, man. This guy's sick. Yeah, he's looking real clean at the moment. Have to be happy about that one. So the tactical timeout to try and save Heroic as they are facing elimination in the round of 12. Team Liquid might be able to move on in the playoffs. No small parts. NIP Look waiting that for them. Man. NIP waiting for them. You're absolutely right. They've been here. They've been... In the practice rooms the last two days, they're just next to us in the hallway, so we've been able to keep an eye on what they're up to. And look, if you're looking for a deep run in these ESL Pro League playoffs, Liquid is on the right side of the bracket to do it. Not, not to throw shade at any of the other teams, but you're avoiding FaZe. You obviously have avoided Gambit. You're avoiding Na'Vi. Even, you know, Astralis to a certain extent has looked, you know, somewhat dangerous at times, although obviously shadow of their former glory. Good kill from Tess's with the 5-7. That was the smoke hitting the body as well, giving it away. And now Kadian combining with Tess. This is going to get a gun to his teammate, but the spray through. I thought Nitro was going to get all three. Still manages to do a decent job. Tess on 57. Has to rotate back to the site. The pre-fire in an attempt to bait. Nearly hit Naf, but actually, if he had held it, he would have killed him. And Naf gets it instead. Now they've got lots to work with in the site. Shocks checking for a flank that has not arrived yet. And has he checked too soon? Does that actually give away position? Because Shock's sliding up to put the bomb down. It's going to mean that Ramp is very much getting locked in, getting closed off. Stalin's already up on the scaffolding. Is he going to push the lane? Is he going to walk out directly behind Shock's? Right now, he absolutely is. AK picked up, round over. Good win for Heroic to keep it alive. Double digits they've hit on their CT side. Still five rounds to go. Can't be comfortable yet. Can't be happy yet. Nitro almost recovering yet another round for Team Liquid. They're going to take a timeout. It's their fourth and final timeout for Team Liquid. Five sevens doing work for Heroic. Yeah, Nitro almost was able to transfer that into a triple kill. Naf and Shox is a, is a pretty scary clutch pairing to have. Really fortunate to get that kill through smoke at range. Those two guys are probably the two you'd pick on this Liquid team to put into a clutch situation, although shout out to Osi, he's delivered in some, some big situations and obviously Liege no slouch as well. Five more opportunities. Now, no reason to believe that Heroic couldn't. Shock smoked. Shush. Gonna sneak in behind the railing and go down the outside of the stairs so as not to be seen, not to be heard, and not to be exposed and getting into this lovely little off-angle position. We saw Shocks be a nuisance as well in these positions in the first half one round. He got a triple kill in multiple different positions. He is gonna clear it, but can't connect the shots as cleanly as he would have liked through the stairs. Good recovery from OC. Gets the immediate trade as well without taking damage, so... I shouldn't say it, without taking damage, without taking substantial damage, so that will give them something back considering how dangerous that could have been. They are still a man down though, having lost a liege.
back towards middle. Naf holding at the base of the ramp. Chess is to be challenged, and he is the only one here. Nitro is going to lead the way. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Transitions to utility. Transitions to innate at the worst possible time. Yeah, not the best situation to put yourself in. No doubt about it. Refresh. That's an easy three on three that they found. Doesn't cost him anything. Nitro getting closer. Stalin with the aggressive position. This is another one that could be one and done. Oh, he didn't see them either. He hesitated. Nitro comes out from behind the stairs. That's going to put this into a three on two. And Nitro to execute quickly. They know that they've just opened up the B site. Refresh trying to get above the window. Smoke down in front of them, though. He spams in. And they'll drop and go very fast. And they're going to boost up drywall close. This might catch off Nitro as he's so low on HP. But oh my god, he just barely, just barely got up behind the AC unit. And if he doesn't move at all, there's no reason for them to suspect his presence. He's got to be careful with these smokes dissipating, though. Timer on that of how aggressive he can be in this position. Refresh certainly aware of the possibility. Someone would be there, so pre-fires in on entry, and that gives Naf a chance. He's only good for one, so it's Refresh versus OC. The rookie versus the man who tore Liquid apart in its previous iteration at Pro League, and he's already spotted. Refresh knows he's far from the bomb, and that means he's got far time. He's got so much time, oh. and OC's gonna win it out. Liquid's gonna take this two to zero. What a shot on the turn, the jump up and spin from OC. A huge performance from the young North American talent, proving his quality, proving his worth on this team. He was dominant in the first half, and yeah,